Magnets. Everyone has heard of them. These physical oddities are everywhere. On fridges, in toy stores, and even in science labs. And yet, they seem to be so mysterious. Well, if you watched my last video, you know that Ampere formulated the law of magnetostatic force. A moving charge creates a magnetic field. So how do magnets actually work then? Do they have an electrical current flowing through them? Wouldn't they shock you? Isn't electricity dangerous? Indeed, magnets are often the subject of public debate. Water, fire, air, and dirt. <gasps> In magnets, how do they work? Well, the answer is a little complicated. With a little help from science, we can understand it. The reason for this, like a lot of things in the universe, seems to relate to the atomic interaction of the materials. For some reason, fridge magnets won't stick to all metals, only a few. Why is this? Thanks to our insight of the atomic world, we know the answer. From Niels Bohr's atomic model, we know that electrons are constantly whizzing around the outside of the atom, around the nucleus. This motion of electric charge creates a magnetic field. Now, most of the time, this doesn't add up to anything because the individual little magnetic fields that the electrons are making don't add up to anything. But what would happen if they somehow got aligned? Well, something that happens a lot on this planet is lightning. Something that you might be able to find after a lightning storm is a lodestone. How are these created? Turns out that lightning produces a lot of electric current. This electric current produces a very large magnetic field. This magnetic field is strong enough to permanently magnetize any ferromagnetic materials around. What do I mean by ferromagnetic? Well, that's basically just a fancy word for magnetizable. Scientists like to classify things because, well, it kind of helps keep everything straight. So, they refer to magnetizable materials generally as ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic. The difference between them is related to their microscopic structure. But maybe we'll go into that in another video. The reason why some materials won't stick to a magnet is because of the way that they are atomically composed. If something is a paramagnetic substance, like platinum, aluminum, or oxygen, it might be weakly attracted. This attraction is hundreds of thousands of times weaker than that of ferromagnetic materials, but in situations with a very strong magnetic field, such as an MRI, they can still be magnetized. But there is one last classification, diamagnetic. This means repelled by both poles. These substances actually seem to have a lower magnetic permeability than vacuum. They're even less magnetically permeable than empty space. Permeability is just how easy it is for something to permeate or push through. You know like how gravel is more permeable to water than mud? Kind of like that but with magnetic fields instead. The copper just opposes the magnetic field trying to push into or through it. The way that the atoms are locked together and the electrons are spinning means that any sudden introduction of a magnetic field of sufficient strength will be opposed. Our understanding of these mystical rocks is basically what allows us to have electricity. Transformers, generators, and even electric motors all use magnetism in their operation. The connection between electricity and magnetism is why it's such a bad idea to let your phone anywhere near a magnet. The exact operation of computers and other modern devices is for another video. But it's self-evident that all of these devices use electricity, and introducing a sudden magnetic field where it's not supposed to be might cause some problems. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Have a good one.